In this video, I am going to walk you through the end-to-end -end process of downloading, installing and running DeepSeek R1, the 32 billion parameter version of it, on a Mac Mini M4 Pro with 24 gigabytes of RAM. So that's effectively the base model of the Mac Mini Pro. It's got 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, 24 gigs of RAM, and it's the standard CPU. So it's a good computer for running language models locally, uh, and that's why I chose it. it. Takes up very little space on the desk, and also, um, you know, it's a Mac. Here we go. I'm going to first off head on over to olama.com forward slash download and download the application. So that's going to take a minute as I grab that file. So it's a 180 meg file. It will take a little while to download. So DeepSeekR1 is a, a, a rival to the OpenAI option. Now, why that's interesting is apparently DeepSeekR1 is running on commodity hardware and not the high-end uh, NVIDIA GPUs plus it was built for purportedly six million dollars now that might sound like a lot of money to you and me but um, compare that against the billions of dollars that have been invested in other models that's a real uh, interesting situation that we find ourselves in what deep sea car one is in terms of the local installations is it's not a 671 billion parameter version, which is what you can download. It's open source. You can run it on your server farm if you have one of those at home. For us normal folk, what you can get is models which have been trained. And the way it's trained the, let's call them small language models, is it's given the ability to do reasoning and We'll see what that looks like in reality. The higher the parameter the model, the um, more training data it's been given. So this is the base model before it's been trained. But the more data it's got, the better the responses that you're likely to get out of it. So the 32 billion parameter model, I think is the sweet spot in terms of the capabilities and the performance that you're going to get out of a Mac. Okay, so we've got Olama downloaded. So let's go and grab that. And let's extract the file and then we're just going to run it. Uh, okay, I'm just going to move a copy into applications. And we are up and running. It's as simple as that. It's a few clicks. Okay, so what you then need to do is uh, go to terminal and let's go to um, Olama. No, I'll tell you what I'll do instead is I will go to the models and I'll get the link to run Deep Seek R1. Okay, so I want the 32 billion parameter version. She's 20 gig download. So I'm going to paste the Olama run deepseek hyphen R1 colon 32 billion 32B into my terminal. Okay, well there we go. We've got some writing manifest success. And I'm just going to first off type hello. It's worth noting that the first couple of times that you run this, or certainly the first time, it will take a little while to get going. It takes a little while to warm up, but the the process will get faster. Right, so whilst that's starting to warm up, let's just done. what we'll do is we'll open the GPU history so what this is going to do is just going to tell us a little bit how the um, the system's thinking okay so let's say goodbye to that I'm going to 
do the yellow. I'm going to do Alarma run deepseek hyphen R1 colon 32B. And this time I'm going to do that slash slash verbose. Now all that's going to do is after it's provided me with the response, it's also given give me a, some metrics as to how it's performed. So the how long it's taken, the how long it's um, how many tokens it's used to generate it. So that's a, a unit of measurement. So that gives me some statistics. And the most interesting one for me is the uh, how long it takes to do the task. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, ask it to do something that might be a little bit challenging, and that's to recite a poem. OK, so please recite the poem if by Rudyard Kipling. Now let's see how it gets along with that. So it's identified that this is one of Rudyard Kipling's most famous pieces of work and um, if it knows it then it should be able to just print this out to the screen but if it doesn't irrespective of the data it's trained on it might end up doing some quite interesting hallucinations so here we go This is doing a pretty good job of it, looks like. So that's actually really interesting. So it's uh, giving me some... I'm just checking it now. I don't know the poem off by heart. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that's done a really good job of reciting that whole poem. I wonder... Um, I'm going to ask it so I know previously when I've done some of these tests and I've asked it to recite lyrics from popular music it's really struggled and some people think that may be because it's copyrighted materials but um, I wonder um, if there's a please provide me with lyrics from the song Knowing Me Knowing You by ABBA I'm hoping I've got that I think that's what it's called let's just check Knowing Yes So it'll be interesting to see what it comes up with in terms of this test past the poem. I suspect that poem's in the public domain, given its age and it's readily available. So that must be part of its training data. This might be a bit trickier for it. It may have an issue with its being um, copyrighted. So we'll see, we'll see. We'll see how it gets along.
okay well it seems to have yeah it seems to be hallucinating some words there and some lyrics that's quite entertaining again this is I'm just doing this for a bit of fun I'm not necessarily expecting it to give me the right answer um, I just want to see what it comes up with and you know I'm sure that if I made this a part of a um, a system that had access to the internet um, and you can definitely do that I've got a video on how you do that then it would be able to gather the right information from a website and then print that out to screen so it's a maybe an unfair test but it's just entertaining to see what it comes up with and I'm gonna ask it one final prompt I think please provide me with an example of a prompt which LLMs find difficult to answer I always think it's nice to be kind and polite with your language models because when they do ultimately take over the world it, they hopefully they'll remember that politeness and give you an easy uh, an easy ride of it when you become uh, inevitably an AI slave so you know if that happens in my lifetime I want them to think you know Gary uh, was all right to me so um, I can be kind back to him in in due course What I do like about these versions of DeepSeek is that you can see how it's coming up with the answer and you can watch it and understand its rationing. Other language models which don't have this function, they just give you the answer and they don't give you the context for the answer. And that can be quite useful because if it's going off on a tangent then you start to get to understand why it's going off a tangent. Now, why that can be useful is it means that you could potentially, rather than ask it the question that you've asked it, you might reframe your question and the reasoning might get you closer to the type of answer that you're hoping from it. So uh, that's what I like about the uh, these deep seek models. I mean, the other thing that I've been conscious of the reasoning does take additional time to come up with an answer and so if you're using other models such as Gemma 2 or 5.4 or Llama 3.1, 3.2 they don't necessarily take quite as much time to come up with an answer um, and again they don't have that reasoning aspect right at the start and for certain situations where you want it to spit out a kind of definitive answer very quickly then another model might be more appropriate but you know I think there's going to be times when deep seek and the distilled versions of DC deep, deep seek like we're looking at here are more appropriate and other times when one of those other language models is going to be the tool that you want to use to get the job done. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to see me running this and deep seek in a situation where I've actually granted the language model internet access, so deep seek one internet access, then have a look at this video over here.